uh, years ago I was doing a show for a group, it was right after the Super Bowl, and their CEO went out ahead of me and started, uh, I guess he had spent his entire Super Bowl Sunday making a really boring analogy between life and the Super Bowl. And he went out and he tried to kind of pump up the troops with this terrible motivational thing. He said, uh, you know, we're on the 50-yard line and we're trying to get to the end zone and people were falling asleep, they were bored, they are ignoring him. He knew he was bombing, so after a couple of minutes of this, he ran off and pushed me out. Now, I can't go into my act, right? So I did the survey method. I went out and I said, hey, a quick survey. How many people hope next year during the Super Bowl, Bill does like the rest of us and just drinks a beer? <laughs> I was getting into open mics and stand-up comedy, but I still had my day job when I was sent to Rochester, New York on a business trip. Now, on the trip, one of my co-workers won tickets to see comedian Larry Miller at the local comedy club, and that person couldn't go, so they gave me the tickets. I went, and it was just great. There were only 20 people in the audience and a room that seated probably 200, and what I saw Larry do was just amazing. He put down the mic and did his entire comedy routine without it. He was hilarious, and I remember like 20 minutes of it was just in defense of the post office alone. And he talked about how you couldn't fly anywhere for 20 cents or whatever a stamp cost back then. Just brilliant material. But what I really remember the most was that he did his act, and aside from putting down the mic and saying, I don't think I need this, he didn't pay any attention to the size of the crowd. You know, I've been in front of big crowds. The biggest was 4,400, and I've been in front of small crowds. The smallest, I think, was zero, (laughs) at least in the beginning. That was at a casino. People didn't pay for the show at a casino. So at the start time, when no one was in the room, the club manager said, just get on stage and start talking. People will come in. Yeah, he thought people would hear the jokes and, you know, come running in. A few people did, but mostly mm, not so much. It was a really dumb idea. Now, my first or second year of comedy, I did a show for two people. Yeah, it was at the Comedy Cafe in D.C., the club I started in, and it was their last week of being open. Clubs were closing all over the country, and and this one was too. The comedy boom was kind of over. Mark Marin was the headliner that weekend, Big Al was the feature act, and I was the MC. And since this was the last weekend in the club, they didn't do any advertising. (laughs) So only two people showed up. They were very nice people, though, and I did my comedy thing. Then Al did his set, and he left, and then Mark got on stage. Mark invited me to come back on stage and just have a discussion with the couple. They weren't even dating. They were just friends, and I think we mostly talked about sex. We had lots of laughs, and the couple had a great time. It was memorable for me, and I bet it was memorable for them, too. Over the years, I've had other shows with very small audiences. Many times, comics would get mad and not do a great job for the crowd. They'd just get up there and talk about what a crappy small crowd they were. I took the other tactic. I'd say something fun like, I like small crowds, but if you went to your job and there were only like three people there, wouldn't you figure you missed a holiday or something? You know, what is today anyway? Or I'd point at a woman on a date and say, see, isn't it nice? He bought out the entire club for you. These lines always worked really well. I remember a particular small crowd at a show once, and all the comics were doing their worst and being angry about it. I got up on stage and did a great job and got lots of laughs from the few people. And then partway through my set, I found out that the couple in the front row had been on the news recently because they were the parents of septuplets. Yes, seven kids at once. This was their first night out in months. I worked even harder to give them a great show. The takeaway tip from this is, regardless of who is or isn't listening to you, make sure you do a memorable job that the person or people will enjoy and remember. People have made an effort to participate in whatever you're doing, like the septuplet couple. They had spent money, maybe gotten a babysitter, and it was a big deal for them to get a night out. Don't ruin it because your expectations are different. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Feel free to check out my website, theworklady.com. This is Jan. Take care and enjoy your journey.